Sorry, you're all ready to go, Janine. We're recording. Okay, great. So thanks for joining us today. My name is Janine, and I'm joined here by three teachers or lecturers at the University of Auckland who teach Spanish language. Um, so if you guys would like to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what uh, your research interests are. Um, Eduardo, would you like to start? Okay. Um... I'm Eduardo Piñeros. I'm Associate Professor in Spanish Linguistics at the University of Auckland. Um, I specialize in phonology and morphology. Phonology is the sound patterns of Spanish. Morphology is the word structure of Spanish. Uh, I teach courses related to Spanish linguistics. Okay, great. Um, and Catherine, would you like to go? My name is Catherine Lehman. Um, I teach uh, Spanish language, and I'm in the Latin American Studies program. So my research tends to be about media. I'm very interested in the film and other forms of media, and I've done subtitling and helped produce a documentary film. And I'm most um, familiar with and tend to teach most about Argentina and Chile and the countries that I've worked in. Okay, great. And go ahead. Okay, uh, my name is Valesca Pino Ojeda. I am originally from Chile. I specialize on Latin American cultural studies from a very critical theory approach and very political perspective. I specialize mainly on uh, music, film, and social movements, which are all the topics that we uh, include in our Latin American studies program. I direct the Center of Latin American Studies. That's more or less mine. And of course, I teach a, a lot of language papers like we all do. <laughs> of course. And Eduardo, did you want to introduce the members who couldn't make it today? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, unfortunately, two of our permanent staff had to teach at this time and they could not join us. But I want to mention that um, our colleague, Christine Arkinstall, uh, oh, who uh, specializes in modern Spanish literature and cultural studies, 19th and 20th centuries, constructions of nationhood and gender studies. Um, and our colleague, Jose Colmeiro, uh, specializes in modern Spanish literature and cultural studies, gender, cinema, music, and memory studies, transnational and global studies, Hispanic transatlantic studies, European studies, comparative literature, and contemporary Galician culture. All right. Sounds like you've got a lot of areas covered there. Okay, so we were gonna start with the video, I believe, Eduardo, if you wanted to yes. share that. Yes, um, so um, let me share my screen. We prepared, um, a brief video to give you um, a global idea of um, what we do at Spanish and Latin American studies. And so um, we're hoping that as you watch the video, you get some ideas, some concrete questions, and then you could use your chat function to send us your questions or comments, and then we can discuss those later um, uh, when we finish, okay? So I'm gonna play that video for you now. Here it goes. When you study a foreign language, you begin to find out. Is the sound okay? Yes. Great. Who you are in your own language. Anybody who wants to become fluent in Spanish, be able to use it practically, uh, will enjoy it because that's what we do. The more one can come into contact with diverse cultures and perspectives, the better this world will be. Spanish is spoken by more than 500 million people in more than 20 countries. The second most widely used language in the world, it is also the second language of the United States, where television and radio stations across the country broadcast in Spanish. A gateway to international trade and the culture industries, Spanish opens the doors to Europe and Latin America. When we learn our first language as children, we do it subconsciously, not knowing how complicated a language is. But when we learn a second language as adults, we realize that there's so much to learn. I teach Spanish 104, 
So we try to give them an introduction to the language and a little bit of uh, culture. I, I like classes to be very personalized. I like to be very energetic in class. I like to go around, talk to the students, make jokes, make the environment really relax. As a non-native English speaker, I can tell the, my students the challenge that is to learn a foreign language so I can interact with them in that sense and they can feel uh, more comfortable. It was kind of an accident that it happened really. I had no intention of studying Spanish when I came to university. I did it as a gen ed paper and I mentioned after reading a book that I'd had some interest in the Spanish Civil War to one of my history lecturers and she says oh that's quite a um, open field of research at the moment, especially for English speakers. So I started looking at all the Spanish papers that were available and they had some that were on the Civil War later down the track. So I reshuffled my whole degree in second year and decided to major in Spanish instead. After I finished my undergraduate, I did a master's in Spanish focusing on Spanish as Civil War literature and um, war trauma. And I'm now preparing to do my PhD in a similar kind of field. So yeah, I'm hoping to lecture eventually. So I think it's pretty pivotal for my, my future, definitely. I'm doing a BA in English and Linguistics with a module in Spanish too. Here, teachers and professors are able to tailor some of the aspects of the course um, according to your needs. For second year Spanish, they offer um, a summer school program at the University of Salamanca. The program is called Cursos Internacionales. So it's intensive language, about five hours a day for four weeks. So I did that first in Salamanca in Spain and really loved it. Birthplace of the first modern novel, Don Quixote, Spanish was historically a driver of global exploration, trade and colonization, but came late to democracy, entering the EU in 1986. Since that time, Spain has seen a huge economic, social and political transition. My area of specialization is uh, the socio-cultural politics of Spain from the early 19th century right up to the 21st century. I fell in love with Spanish culture and uh, literature and language when I arrived in Spain at the age of 20 and I was very lucky to arrive in Spain as Spain was emerging from an almost 40 year long dictatorship and tra transitioning through to democracies. I love being in the classroom, I'm very passionate about my teaching and I think it's very important to uh, have a really uh, keen understanding of where cultures have been in order to understand where societies stand uh, in uh, today's contemporary world. Spanish also introduces you to innovations taking place across Latin America, often known only for spicy food and football. Yet the Mexican Revolution opened the 20th century with art from Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. And for the last 50 years, a youthful Che Guevara has been the most reproduced photographic image in history. Over the last decade, Argentine, Brazilian, Chilean and Mexican films have filled theatres with five Oscars for Best Film by Mexican directors, while tango, flamenco, salsa and capoeira form part of our daily soundscape. I work in the area of media and communication. In particular, I look at issues at how um, citizens and community media can work toward peaceful Oops. What happened? When you study a foreign language, you begin to find out who you Taking place across salsa and capoeira form part of our daily soundscape. I work in the area of media and communication. In particular, I look at issues at how um, citizens and community media can work toward peaceful resolution of conflict social justice and human rights. And so what I really like about the film course is the way in which the very personal stories that we see on screen can give students a very good understanding of what they're reading in print about the history. Um, I'm doing a BA with a double major and that's in geography and Spanish. Through film you get the opportunity to uh, delve into personal stories that um, 
tell you a lot about the history and the culture of that particular country. A long time ago I spent some time in Ecuador and had an introduction to the language and the culture there. I can't wait one day to go back to Latin America and this time it will be a completely different experience for me because I'll have so much more understanding. Uh, I consider myself today basically focus on the role of culture in democratization and that started in my university years in Chile when I participated in the cultural resistance to the dictatorial regime. Well, I teach a music paper which, which traces the development of the history, politics and cultural movements in Latin America through music. So we start with the rancheras and corridos mexicanos and we end up with hip hop. The students that enjoy my courses in our program are probably those who are very interested in understanding the world around them and especially in understanding the place that Latin America occupies in the world and the relationship with New Zealand. What is necessary for this relatively small country is to make sure that we have businesses which can support our economy. But I think we can also have students engage in businesses everywhere without looking at other cultures as just for extracting things from them, but to engage in a process where others are benefiting as well as we are. I guess I didn't study Spanish because I thought it would open jobs, but I think the more that I have become interested in language, I think that um, it's, it's continued to open opportunities for me, but not so much at the level that it's like, oh, I can put on my CV that I speak Spanish. I think that by feeling more comfortable to communicate with more people, more opportunities have opened. Hi, Mai. Welcome to the Spanish and Latin American Studies program. We look forward to teaching you and learning with you at the University of Auckland. Okay. Lovely. Thanks so much for sharing that, Eduardo. Um, I'll just mention for anyone who's joined us since we started, um, if you have any questions that come up while we're chatting, please just pop them into the chat box and then we'll be um, doing a little Q&A session um, at the end of the uh, webinar. But if you have any, you can just pop them in there as you think of them. Thanks. Great. Um, so following on in the video, I just wanted to emphasize that a very important reason to learn Spanish is that Spanish is a global language with more than 500 million speakers around the world. Spanish is the second most spoken native language, which means that by learning Spanish, you gain the ability to communicate with a huge portion of the world you gain access to the cultures, the traditions, the literatures, the knowledge that is produced in Spain and Latin America, which together amount to more than 20 countries where Spanish is the official language. And that's not all because there are numerous other countries where Spanish is also spoken, although not as the official language, but still widely as is the case uh, of the United States, where there are more than 40 million Spanish speakers. Um, of course, speaking Spanish doubles your opportunities for a career in the future. You have access not only to the English speaking world, but also to the Spanish speaking world. And Catherine can tell you a little bit about how you can use your Spanish and Hispanic cultures in various fields such as your microphone. So I um, have done quite a bit of translation and interpreting one of, we have a few of our students who have gone on for careers in translation. So that's one field. Um, do you wanna keep showing us the other one? We know of several of our students who have gone on to work in the area of tourism um, or media or journalism, and of course, business. We have a number of students who have worked with Fonterra and other businesses that uh, have 
uh, work in Latin America. We have a couple of who have worked for MFAT. We have one right now in particular who's working for MFAT. And of course, a number of the um, ONGs uh, also use uh, students who have languages. Um, diplomacy of libraries always need uh, students with language skills. And finally, teaching. We um, have quite a demand for Spanish across New Zealand. And so teaching is another op opportunity for students. There's always the opportunity to combine different areas. In my own experience, when I began learning languages, my dream was to be uh, a translator. And I did become an official translator in my country. Colombia, but I kept uh, learning languages. I incorporated French, Italian, Portuguese, and I got more interested in languages and went into graduate study and got a PhD. And then I became a researcher and a teacher. And I've been doing this for over 25 years, combining all these different things with my passion for language and for the cultures. Um, excellent. So uh, now Catherine will tell us a little bit about our specialization areas. All of us, we teach Spanish language, of course, but language is not all we do. Uh, we need to acquire the language, but along with the acquisition of the language, there is disciplinary content expertise that we provide. So um, are you asking me to talk about our staff? Uh... Yes, so you've seen some of our staff members already describing their areas of specialization. So we all teach the Spanish language at different levels, first, second, and third year into postgraduate. Some of us also teach a translation course. And then uh, Valesca and I teach Latin American studies. Eduardo teaches linguistics, among other courses. And we also have um, film um, and other music courses as well, yeah. Valeska, would you like to compliment? Well, uh, with respect to Latin America, I have to say that we have a very comprehensive uh, set of papers that we teach our students. They are um, intrinsically interdisciplinary. We teach society, politics, history, culture, and Catherine specializes on indigenous studies. So the students really receive a very comprehensive knowledge about the history of Latin America from uh, prior to the arrival of European colonizations. And we really focus on culture as a medium really to teach about the region. So our papers are very intermedial. We teach film, music, visual cultures. So it's very, very comprehensive and entertaining in many ways. Yeah. Now uh, in the language courses, we make sure that the language is taught communicatively, very interactively. The, the lessons, the language, the time we spend in the classroom with the students is dedicated to communicative activities where the students apply the language and actually for a purpose. So we contextualize the content, the grammar. It's not taught just grammar per se, but grammar with a purpose, with a function to accomplish something to communicate. So that's very important to make it meaningful and interested in terms of language. And of course, I know there's music incorporated, film, there's always the cultural aspect. And then for my linguistics courses, uh, I should mention I have one course called Spanish Sound Structure, where we help the students develop a more native-like Spanish pronunciation at the same time that we study the various uh, pronunciation tendencies that exist in the Spanish speaking world. There are so many different pronunciations of Spanish and students learned, oh, okay, this is a South American accent. This is a Spanish accent. This is Central American. They know how the sounds work in, although it's the same language, they have different sound systems and work differently. I also have a course on Spanish morphology. This is called Spanish word structure, which is very useful for students to um, increase their vocabulary exponentially because they learn to, they understand how all the words of Spanish are constructed that you don't need to learn word by word, item by item, because there are general principles about how the language works. And then they learn to discover those principles and apply them and uh, really expedite their learning of the language. Can I add something, Eduardo, that I think would be very relevant for our colleagues who teach Spanish at school? I think that 
it's very important for them to know that we acknowledge the background our students bring to the classroom and not just the background related with the Spanish speaking world, but the different cultural historical backgrounds they bring because we usually try also to benefit from the wealth of knowledge the students coming from Asia, from the Middle East, et cetera, bring because we can trace comparisons and really create connections. And those students who have traveled, although they may not be proficient in the language, but have some world knowledge through the trips, we acknowledge that by basically incorporating their knowledge and also sometimes in the, in the language papers, they can take placement tests so they can progress faster and take more advanced papers towards their degrees. Thank you. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about um, the various programs that we offer. There are three main ways in which um, students can study Spanish with us. The main one is to use Spanish as one of their two majors for the BA. So if you come to the University of Auckland, to the Faculty of Arts, the Bachelor of Arts is structured in such a way that it comprises two majors. And a major is um, 120 points, which is one third of the, B, uh, of the BA. So the BA is three years, that's 360 points. One major is 120 points. So doing a Spanish major is the equivalent of doing one of the three years of the BA focusing on Spanish. That's the main option, but students who cannot have Spanish as one of their majors could also just do a sequence of courses. This is called a module. So if they have, for instance, some knowledge of Spanish already and they want, don't wanna lose it and wanna continue and become fluent, they could do a sequence of three courses and that uh, module appears under stress, under official transcript as one of their qualifications. And um, also there is the possibility for students who cannot accommodate because they have a major in another faculty, for instance, but they still want to take some language. So many students take Spanish as their general education requirement and do the beginner Spanish course. Those are the main three ways in which students use Spanish. There are two other ways which are more flexible for stu students who um, are non-conventional, they work full time, for instance, and they need more flexibility. So for those students, we offer the certificate in languages or the diploma in languages, a sequence of four or eight courses. Okay, so we could talk about um, um, the entry. Some students come as true beginners, and if they are true beginners, they just begin with uh, stage one, the first course for us is Spanish 104, but other students have already done some coursework. So they, they declare in a form online, they tell us, okay, I did this, this many credits in Spanish. And based on that information, then we provide a language, uh, uh, an online language placement test. They take it online and depending on the result, then we are able to recommend the student, uh, if the, that student could skip, skip the first uh, beginner Spanish course and go into the second or go into stage two, that depends on the results. Eduardo, mm -hmm. I was just thinking that we have six minutes left and I wonder if our audience wants to ask questions, if we, we should keep the last five minutes. Good, okay, well, let's check um, the chat and see if we have received any questions there. Because we understand that this presentation will be posted in different websites in our university. So whatever we are not able to cover right now, our colleagues will be able to see it and, and have that very handy, but probably we can use the last minutes for questions. Uh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have any questions in the chat right now. All right. Um, so we could continue and as they pop up, we can answer questions. So yeah, any questions that come up, right? please just pop them in the chat and we'll, I'll be watching that. Thank okay. you. All right, so why don't we talk about uh, study abroad, Valeska? Well, the study abroad is, uh, we have a study abroad in Spain and in Latin America. As the student was presenting in our video, Justine, she thoroughly enjoyed the experience in Salamanca, right? 
And we have, we have different options. The most common is that our students go in our summer to enjoy for a one month in, in Spain, in Salamanca, or in Chile, in Valparaíso. But we also have open options in, in the middle of the year, in our winter, which is Europe summer. And in special circumstances, we can also authorize students to go in different, to, to complete a semester in a step. I would like to mention that in addition to the study abroad, we have Oakland abroad, which is about spending a semester of a year abroad, which is going to be then papers that are going to be counted towards the degree and also we have a, a very important scholarship that the university offers, like the study abroad scholarship, but also in the case of Latin America, we still are privileged to enjoy the prime minister scholarship to Latin America, which allows for Spanish study in the language, but also for other for other experiences in Latin America. So we have plenty of options uh, to go abroad. Our students really, really have very handy the opportunity to enjoy and practice the language in Spain or Latin America or in other places if there is something convenient for them, which needs to be pre-approved, of course. Okay. I see no questions on the panel here. Yeah. No questions. <laughs> That's because we are so clear. <laughs> I think one of the major things that we try to do is really prepare students so that when they get to the region or the country, wherever they're going, they feel very comfortable. Um, and I, I'm quite happy with the way that students often come back and say that they, they remembered some of the things that we taught them when they got there and they felt more comfortable in dealing with with the people they met. So that, that's really our goal is that they feel comfortable when they get there and that they can um, um, use the language easily without being too nervous to speak. Another element of that, Catherine, that's very lovely. Thank you. Because the other element is that when students spend some time abroad or they feel confident in the third year, is that they join in our local Latin American and Spanish community. So they start participating on their cultural events, which is very lovely to see. They have groups in Facebook. So as soon as the students gain a little bit more of confidence, they actually start interacting with the native speakers that we have plenty in New Zealand, right? That's right. Yeah, that's a good point. So even right now, when it's not easy to travel, they still get plenty of experience speaking with native speakers. Absolutely. And they create their own clubs. It's also sometimes dancing clubs. So they create, for instance, handcrafts. And right now, there is a huge it's a colleague that is working on organizing the Dia de los Muertos, and they get together to organize things. So the, the possibility of enjoying a life practicing Spanish is growing and growing within our own local communities. And our students are part of that and are helping that possibility to increase. Well, it looks like we don't have any questions. If there was anything else on any of you wanted to say, um, we have a couple of minutes for that. I, I suppose I was also going to say in terms of um, sometimes film, one of the lovely things about film is it deals with also very serious issues. So sometimes you might go to a beach in Latin America, you might have a fun time, but you don't actually understand what's going on in the country. So we really uh, find it important for um, our students to know a little bit about the history so that when they see something happening, they kind of have a feel for, okay, I understand what's happening because I saw a movie about that and I, I have a little bit better understanding of what, what's going on here. So that's one thing. You were going to say something, Eduardo? Did I interrupt? Oh, no, <laughs> just, just inviting everybody that learning a language is a fabulous, fabulous thing. It's a tool. It's an amazing tool that gives you access to so many things. It teaches you to see the world in a completely different way. It enriches you as a person and it just opens the world for you. I, I don't know what it, I would be without languages. It's just so I guess, essential to me. I just would add to that to finish a little bit that I would like to thank our colleagues in the schools who are actually doing this beautiful oh, job. 
because the students we receive from the schools in which our students have studied Spanish are usually our best students. Yes, that's and right. This is thanks to the job our colleagues are doing in primary, secondary, intermediate school. I think that your job is absolutely preeminent and you are really doing something fantastic to keep New Zealand multilingual and fully engaged with the rest of the globe. So thank you very, very much. I agree with that. All right, well, it looks like we're come to the end of our time. So thanks to everyone who joined us. Um, and thank you three for being here with me today. Um, and if you need any more information, where can they find more information, Eduardo? Uh, they can write to any of us. Catherine is our undergraduate advisor for any questions about the programs. Uh, I am the, the person who is representing the discipline. Also, you can write to any of us. If you have a particular interest in about Latin America, Catherine and Valesca, about Spain, Jose and Cristina, about linguistics, it's me, translation is Wendy Lynn. Any of us can, can always be, be there to provide the information that is needed. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.